So hello everyone. On this video, I will be discussing the recursive functions. So recursive functions are usually used whenever we want to minimize the number of code repetitions or even when we use we want to use the memory to function or even to calculate the result. So that's basically where we use recursive functions. But let me just show to you a simple function that doesn't use a recursive function. So you can see here in line 15 and line 16, we declared a variable to hold the values within the function. And then we use a for loop because a factorial uses, for example, numbers or the factorial of 5, which means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So there is a decrement Thing, a factor that's happening. So that's why we are using step negative 1 or a step value of one, negative 1 so that it will loop decreasingly. Okay, so next we can see here in if number less than 1, so when a number is less than 1, let's say 0, negative 1, negative 2, so it will automatically return a value of 1. So that's a factorial of values within the range of negative 1. And the next one here is when we have a number of number is equal to 1, so the factor of this number is also 1. Okay? And else, if, uh, and you can see here, it will decrease the value and then multiply it to the prior value. So that's basically where factorial works. And let's just run this code so that we'll be able to know if it is running. So you can see here in line 4, I've added a function factorial and then the number... Three. So we are expecting 3 times 2, which is 6. So you can see here, the value is 6. But what if we want to convert it in a way that it will use a recursive function? Okay, so let me just comment this code here. Okay. So let's just create a function that will make use of the recursive function. So, okay, we have the same numbers, we have the same variable. The next thing that we are going to do is to create a function. If n is, if number is greater than and equal to 1, you can see here, okay, so our function must return a value of 1, as stated on the earlier code, if you can remember, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is this will just return a value of 1 the moment that our value or our number is equal to 1. And the next thing that we are going to do is to call the function again and again. So let's say return factorial, okay? So n minus 1 or number minus 1 times the value of number, okay? So what it does here is you can see that we are returning and yet we are still calling the same function. Okay. So what it does here, it, it will continually call and call and call until our code doesn't find another function to call. So to demonstrate it to you, let me just uh, draw it here. So let me demonstrate or uh, draw a array memory location. Okay, so you can see here I'm creating a memory space. Okay. So for example, this is your memory. And then you are using the function return factorial number minus 1 times the number. So for that, we are calling our first iteration here first and the function is factorial uh, let me just type it here okay let's set it to 12 okay factorial factorial number minus 1 so it doesn't still have any values left so let's say this is number which we already have the, the value which is number let's say it's number 2 or maybe 3 okay so that is your current stack and yet we again go to the same function and then we continually call this one 
so again so 3 and then it will become 2 okay okay you can see here it's number 2 oops let's just erase this one and let's say this is number 2 and then let's call this function again okay so we could just treat it as no 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 it's one okay so we are already on the peak of our uh, our recursive function and the moment that we, it already returns one it will return number here one Okay, so it will go here as return the function treated as number one. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily call the same function again. So our memory will start to calculate the numbers within our stack. So what it does here is one times two times three, and it will eventually have the result which is equal to six. And we are expecting the same result on our function. So let me just run this again. Okay, so we already have the same answer as to what we have when we don't we, don't, we didn't use a factorial or no or the same or the normal function. So that's how recursive function works. We continually call the same function again and again until we reach a time that the value is already returning a constant value. So one of the disadvantages of using recursive function is the memory. Whenever uh, we have 1000, let's say 1000 recursive function, so it will eventually have a memory overflow that could ruin your system's RAM. So that's the danger of using recursive functions. So that's it and we hope to see you guys on the next video.